Is there any going back for the world after the coronavirus pandemic? Can we revert to the old style of economics we've been practicing for over a hundred years? Can we revert back to the old capitalist system now that the pandemic has shown a lot of things obviously wrong with us, to, and I hope it reaches most of the population, but also another part of this is showing how much money the government can spend when it wants to, how radical change can happen from the government when it wants to, but it just doesn't when we're having a normal working year, working week, whatever. So let's get into what I want to talk about. So... A lot of you who follow my channel and probably a lot of you who watch this video will know that I'm anti-capitalist. I don't really know what I am in terms of politics. Uh, obviously, I'm left-leaning, but I don't know if I'm socialist, Marxist, whatever. But I know I'm anti-capitalist. And a lot of you will be too. And we can see the flaws of capitalism. But to the average person, you hear this argument a lot. It's not a great system, but it's the best we have. So I think what this pandemic has done has proved... No, it's not the best we have. So let's take America for one example, right? People getting very sick from this pandemic. People, I guess, who are healthy as well, they just want to get a test. Well, why should that test cost thousands of dollars? Shouldn't the government be paying to get people tested so they can stop the spread of this thing? Well, that goes to show the problem that, of course, the government in the US, and it's not the only one, is so tied up in corporate interests it really hampers a pandemic response. Obviously, of course, you have someone like Donald Trump in charge who doesn't believe in the science. You can see a video of him saying it was a hoax like three weeks ago. And, and now they're considering UBI to deal with it because that's how quickly it, it, it has spread. But again, if the government wanted to effectively respond, you don't take corporate interests into account and you should have had a universal healthcare system like most of the world anyway. So you don't really think about a corporation's profits when you're thinking about testing for a deadly disease. So again, that's, that's the healthcare argument. Like We know how broken the healthcare in America is, but I, I guess most people would think if, if we're having a global pandemic, surely the tests, if, if I want to find out if I have it so I don't spread it to my parents, I don't spread it to my grandparents, surely that should be free. Isn't that in the public interest that people should know I have this so I can take the precautions myself or the government can put me in isolation to stop the spread. But again, corporate interest hampers everything. And you saw things like Donald Trump asking if, if a company can make the vaccine exclusive to the US. Because it's just everything in the US is, is, is tied up in this crony capitalist system. And hopefully there's no going back. Because even if you're a Trump supporter, I guess you might be brainwashed to think he's doing a good job right now. But you can still see that the economics of the US are, are, are so flawed. And especially around healthcare. But there obviously are numerous other problems because I've seen people experiencing landlords threatening them, um, people, uh, saying if you don't pay your rent for next month, we're going to chuck you out during a pandemic. Corporations saying you better come into work or you're going to get fired. People going to work knowing they have the disease because if they don't go, they can't pay their rent, they can't pay for food, they can't pay for their health insurance, they get, you know, basically they become homeless if they don't work. And has there ever been a more, I guess, in your face example to people of wage slavery? If your whole being is tied up in working lots of times for awful companies just so you can live, and even if you have a deadly virus that is spreading around the world, you can't stop that work, or you will be made homeless, and maybe you will die. A again, is there any free will there? Is there any choice? Of course there isn't. So hopefully it wakes people up a lot. Now, I'm going to switch to the UK to use an example of, of how capitalism has affected our pandemic response. So essentially what the government said a couple of weeks ago, they were going for herd immunity. We would all get the virus. So later, if it became seasonal, we'd all become immune. Of course, the trade-off is lots more people will die. And what the scientists and, and people who, who work for the government will say is that we'll take the hit now. So when it comes back, we won't take as many hits and hopefully we'll, we'll be prepared. But there isn't a lot of evidence that this is going to become seasonal. There's not a lot of evidence that you can become immune to it. So why would the government take this action? At least in part, although I believe it's a major reason, is that they don't want to put any any 
things in place to stop the economy from working. Of course, it's a Tory party who are in bed with big business. I haven't been told I should work from home. Lots of people I know still going to work up London. You know, a massive, massive city. Worse than the rest of the country for the coronavirus. We still have to go in. There's numerous other things like that as well. Boris Johnson has only advised people to stay away. Of course, if you advise people, they're not going to do it. You've got to tell them. You've got to make laws. You've got to make it punishable to go out in these places. But he's basically said, I've weighed up my options. So people dying, the spread of the pandemic is worth it if we can just squeeze another couple of days of business from the UK. And, and, and I'll live in some fantasy land where I don't think that the coming storm of all these people who've spread it around while we were doing this awful you know, policy of not properly quarantining people won't affect them as much. Do they live in some deluded reality where they think we can ride this out? They're waiting until summer because they think maybe the seasons will make it better. Again, US and UK are particularly bad examples. Capitalism at its most bare, I guess. When a pandemic strikes, your whole reaction is based on the top 1%'s profits. You are taking that into way more consideration than the health of your citizens. The government are meant to work for us. It's clear to most people who watch my stuff that they don't. Hopefully what the pandemic does is expose how in a capitalist system you can't have a democracy because if they cared about the people, their response would be a lot quicker. Now, of course, there are many capitalist countries who've responded a lot better. Spain, for example, Italy, for example, as well. They are they have responded with quarantine, shutting things down. More common sense approaches. So I, I'm not going to say you can't, in a capitalist society, respond to a pandemic properly. But as we've seen with the UK and US, with certain implementations of capitalism, and even the UK does have a fair amount of socialism, it just hampers the response to the pandemic. And let's compare that to somewhere like China and, and Vietnam and, and Cuba, which have authoritarian socialist countries. And of course, you can be very cynical about that. But there's no denying a poor socialist country like Vietnam has responded way better to the crisis than the UK. One, I think it's the sixth richest country in the world. So whatever you want to say about authoritarian governments and censorship, yeah, it's great to have freedom and everything. I can I can make this YouTube video and say whatever I want. That's great. But I also have the, you know, part of my freedom has to be I have to accept my government are beholding, beholding to rich people and when something like this breaks out, they won't take my health as a person into consideration and they won't take sweeping measures to stop the spread of a pandemic. I'm worried about my grandparents. If they die, who am I going to blame? Boris Johnson, of course, because he hasn't taken measures quick enough. But in Vietnam, they can. And, and it makes it look like the Vietnamese government are working for the people. Yes, they don't have as many freedoms as, the, as us, but it looks like from the outside that the government cares more. And of course, I know about power and control. I know they want to keep the Communist Party in power in these countries. But that should be a motive for the people in this country as well. But Boris Johnson, you want to be kicked out of power because your response is so awful. So again, it just shows the flaws of capitalism to everyone. And now we go to the US where <laughs> a Republican administration are now considering UBI free money, as they would put it, even though Richard Nixon did want to do it himself for a bit, to make sure the economy doesn't collapse. So here's the money for more radical policies. It only took a global pandemic and the stock market crash in to make the Americans realise it's a good policy. Because imagine if Trump does it, wonderful. N not free money, he's helping the economy. If um, Obama did it or something, oh, free money, you just want handouts. And everything. It it's obviously because the people who have money really frame and dictate the way we consume these policies and the way we think about them. But yeah, uh, my summarising point is that, you know, just look at the responses around the world and the UK and US, two, two of the worst countries for capitalism, and just look how this economic system totally destroys us as humans. And I always wrestle with, do I like humanity or not? And there are some really nice stories going around about people helping each other during the coronavirus, but something with humanity and its susceptible, I guess, nature to capitalism is that they're happy to, to basically... Because we've seen awful stories, like people hoarding toilet roll, hoarding all these supplies, trying to price gouge 
it's two sides of the coin and it still doesn't sway me enough to thinking humans are good but again it just feels like in the uk and us because of capitalism because of people caring about what corporations do and what corporations do is spend and everything they're willing to to let people die so they can make so corporations can make more money and that's just the bottom line so hopefully whenever we get through this whether it's six months year two years hopefully there's no going back and what i will say to the democrats in america Running Joe Biden as your candidate it ensures that there is going back. You need someone with a fundamental change in vision. That's why I'm worried about Keir Starmer winning the Labour leadership election because I'm worried if he does, it's going to be the same. We need radical change and people saying, look at what the pandemic did to us. Here's what we're going to do to make sure if something like that happens again, we will be ready. We will value your lives as people and as humans rather than tools for the 1% to extract every bit of wealth out of this country. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. Follow me on social media at The Cavernacle, and that is just on Twitter, the main one, but also Facebook and Instagram. Please check out my Reddit. The subreddit is, is probably the best place. So r slash The Cavernacle for my subreddit u slash tommy ko 1995 for my personal reddit account i'm now on 100 100k karma is that sad or is it cool let me know in the comments um i've also got a nice new setup and I'll, I'll show it in my next video got a mic got a light got a camera stand and that is just from my patrons giving me money so thanks to all you guys and if you want to become one just check it out in the description and also check out my wordpress and if you made it this far thank you for watching